While we're on the topic of men who ruin women's careers, Ryan Reynolds even played one of them. I think I, I need to do a whole series called All the Movies and TV Shows That Taught Women We Should Be Humbled. Now, as I went over in my last video, this guy has been called by his ex-wife and even hinted at from his ex fiance Alanis Morissette, that he is competitive. Seems to have a hard time dating women who are as successful as him. And so he competes with them. And, you know, this is one way to keep them from competing with you. Keep them pregnant always. And yeah, 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 maybe she wants to be a mother and wants to stay home with those kids. If that's what she wants, I want that for her. But I really hope she has an ironclad prenup where she gets paid for all that late while her homies out there buying football teams, um, mobile phone company, all kinds of crap and works all the time but keeps her pregnant anyway back to this trash like i think one of the reasons why i didn't have to work as hard to decenter men as a lot of women is that i literally never watched rom-coms i hated them and now i i accidentally watched them i was gonna watch beauty and the beast to give you all that video because i have so much to say on that being like the original like marry a terrible man to change him when really he's going to change you and ruin your life. Um, and then I saw this and I was like, oh God, there's Ryan. And you know, I'm sorry, I'm just not a fan of this guy right now. And when I saw this photo, I'm like, oh, oh, a desperate woman trying to make someone marry you? What is this? So I watched it and I can't get that hour and however many minutes back. But what I can do is show you all the ways that men who write stories about women Four women are brainwashing us into marriage. Like, okay, God, I'm, this movie made me so mad. I hope y'all are ready. Now, the movie opens up with Sandra Bullock's character. I don't know. I'm just going to call her Sandra because I don't know her name. I forget. I don't care. Sandra's on her little whatever bike, and she's reading and working at the same time. Silly, silly woman. How dare she be ambitious and literally work all the time to get to a position that she's at in this publishing whatever i don't what i forget her title but she's like the boss so she works she works while she's like working out she works while she's eating breakfast and any woman who watches this knows that that is what women have to do women have to be twice as good as any man to be even taken seriously much less get in the position she's in and this is a white woman if she's a black indigenous or woman of color especially a black woman she's gonna have to work like three or four or five times harder to be taken seriously in corporate america or in, or in any job, in the workforce, right? In our society, it is rigged against women in general, even more so against certain women. But here she is working hard, working hard. She's so hard, hard. She's very driven and she's very successful. And then her um, assistant, who we're supposed to kind of side with, um, it, it can't get up on time. You know, he's late. He's got a, what, a, a sock monkey puppet next to his bed. I don't even, whatever. I mean, he's a hard worker, but he's a flirt. He gets Sandra's coffee. All the ladies are in love with him, especially Starbucks, and writes little notes with her number on it. So he's a catch, right? He's a little bit of a bumbling fool, but really hot. And a nice guy who is the voice of reason for the audience as we watch the whole movie humble Sandra Bullock and humiliate Sandra Bullock. Because how dare her be successful and good at what she does? and make more money than him and be the boss of him. Now, everyone at work is scared of Sandra. And it's so funny how the whole office is in on this joke, calling Sandra it. It's here. And Ryan is the leader of this group that hates her. This is the message he sends out to everyone. The witch is on her broom. Watch out, everybody. So in every movie, they have a few scenes that give you, that set the tone and inform you of a character, right? One of the opening scenes, she goes in and this guy, she fires this guy. He lied and said, yeah, I, she, she, he hasn't done an interview in 20 years, you know. And her being a savvy businesswoman and having a big BS detector was like, nah, -uh. don't lie to me. You suck. You're fired. Now, the reason why this scene is important is because this man tries to humiliate her in front of everybody. You can't fire me. And then does the most ridiculous name calling, like, you don't have a life, lady. And he basically is like, you're going to die alone with cats. You know, making fun of her life, i.e. her schmeg's life and dating life. 
all of this in front of the entire office. And then uh, this boss was calm, cool, and collective, the way you have to be, lest you be called hysterical, right? And she's like, bro, I didn't fire you because I feel threatened. I fired you because you're lazy, entitled, incompetent, something or other, and you spend more time cheating on your wife than working. <laughs> like, she roasted this man, right? Because he humiliated her and tried to bring her down a knot. And I'm sitting here thinking like, yes, right? She calm, cool, collective, humiliated him just a little bit back, and then was like, I'm still the boss. I'm calling security if you don't leave now because you didn't do your job and you lied to me about doing your job. There is nothing wrong with, but that whole scene is supposed to set her up to be a cold-hearted bitch that Ryan is going to swoop in and humanize by bringing her down. So let's just see. I mean, I, mean, I don't care about, this is the dumbest love story ever, but they basically tried to make a woman act like a man and then just switch the genders, just switch them. But you can't do that because of patriarchy. Her having a relationship with someone below her is going to make everyone lose respect for her. Sorry, them the rules. We didn't make them. We don't like them. But that's the way it is. Everyone in that office is going to not respect her if she dates anyone in that office. Especially her assistant. But what a funny little premise that a man wrote. A woman directed it, but a man wrote it. And the message is loud and clear. Her bosses are like, sorry, your visa's running out or whatever. Some immigration crisis. Which then she makes a, you know, a racist joke about like, oh, me, an immigrant? I'm not one of those. And now she has to, the only option for her to stay and be successful is to marry. Who's she going to marry? Well, this idiot, of course. Because a woman in power is absolutely going to abuse that power and make a man marry her because she's definitely going to die alone with cat. Because women like that definitely don't have a dating life. So I guess, uh, yeah, just marry this dude, whatever. Now remember, he hates her. He hates her. And so now he's got some power and basically is all about humiliating her. Makes her propose to him on a, on a knee in the middle of New York and is like, no, that's not good enough. Try again. So of course this dude lives in Alaska. So now she's out of her element in his territory with his family who happens to be rich, like loaded. First night they spend together, she tries to walk across the room in her nightgown and she's like, hey, are your eyes closed? And he's like, yep, they're closed. And then he makes fun of her pajamas, having watched her the whole time. When she, in a very vulnerable moment, was like, please don't watch me. Please close your eyes. No, because the man who's below her is here to humble her, but then somehow fall in love with her. I swear, y'all, they want us to marry men who hate us. At some point, they have her chasing an eagle that has captured a tiny white dog, and the whole family laughs at her. Then his mom and grandma take her to a strip show with um, Oscar from The Office. They humiliate her a little more because there's just nothing funny than humbling a woman with a little too much confidence. They also had Betty White do some white womaning stuff here, appropriating indigenous dances and stuff. She's in pain. I don't understand this scene, but it seems very offensive. And it's also to humiliate Sandra Bullock. And they also brought back his old um, high school lover who's younger because she's like 12 years older. So older cat lady. Just so she could be threatened by the younger sweet mm. ginger. There's also some subplot where this dude's got serious daddy issues with uh, Craig T. Nelson from Cope. We learned that her parents died and that's why she hates flowers in the house. And that she hasn't had schmecks in it over a year and a half. She really opens her heart up to him. And this is what we're supposed to see. She's actually a human, not the monster that we think she is for being a successful woman. And he's like, what? You haven't slept with anyone in a year and a half? Blah, blah, blah. She almost gets married because this is all a farce. And then she's like, never mind, I lie. He also rescues her on a boat after knocking her off the boat. See, she's just a damsel in distress after all, y'all. Oh, what a hero. Because of some plot no one cares about, she leaves him at the altar because she just can't be dishonest anymore. And he's like, what? And then his ex-girlfriend's like, go get her. <laughs> like, can a, a man write a movie with one female character I don't hate? God! So grandma fakes a heart attack or something to end the family drama and get him to go after his girl. And then he comes back to the office and in his I love you speech is like, I used to dream about you getting hit by a cab or poison. And she's like, that's nice. And he's like, stop talking. He's doing this in front of all the people that work for her, by the way, humbling her in his wedding proposal. And then I realized I really wanted a wife because you were checking me out naked. 
saying this in front of everybody. Blah, blah, blah. I love you.